Hi everyone, my name is Bob Gilbert. I'm VP and Chief Evangelist at Netscope, and I am very excited to give you a live demo of Netscope Endpoint DLP. So before we get to the demo, a little bit of a setup here, and let's talk about where Endpoint DLP fits into Netscope's advanced cloud DLP system. And first of all, it fits very nicely because what we're effectively doing is we're taking all of the goodness that you get with advanced cloud DLP and we're simply extending it to another target, a very important target, which is USB storage devices. So this is truly a single pass multi-vector architecture. And what that basically means is with Netscope, you can protect data now in any of the thousands of cloud applications, any of the websites, S3 buckets, Azure Blob storage, outbound email, internal private applications, and now extended all the way to USB storage. So all of the advanced capabilities from machine learning based uh, classification to fingerprinting to exact data match, all of the capabilities, you now get them across all of those vectors. And when it comes to DLP on the endpoint, we're leveraging the same cloud inspection point that you get with the Netscope SASE platform. So unlike traditional endpoint DLP systems that rely on a bloated agent that you install on a device and the fans go off on the user machine because it's using all the, uh, the CPU and memory footprint, this is much more elegant than that. Most of the processing takes place in the cloud. So what that allows us to now do is that Netscope client, that lightweight Netscope client that you can use for secure web gateway, cloud access security broker, uh, zero trust network access, cloud firewall, you can now extend all the way to endpoint DLP with the same unified uh, client. We've also implemented an offline mode. So since we're doing a cloud inspection point, if there's a network disconnection, we have options to continue to operate even if, even if you can't get to uh, the Netscope uh, cloud. And then finally, we have separate device control and content control policies to cover an expanded set of use cases. Sometimes you don't want to inspect the data going to the USB storage. You simply want to block access to the USB storage. And that's what device control policies are all, all about. Content control will focus obviously on the content. And then last but certainly not least, um, we are introducing a new contextual input. And this is super useful and it's called file origin. And what makes it super useful is this is a risk-based input that helps you make more effective decisions on whether you want to allow data to go to the USB storage device. So with that, let me give you a demo of what this actually looks like. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna go into my policy engine here and I'm logged into the Netscope SASE platform, same single console for all, uh, all services. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my policy engine and for endpoint protection, there's two areas, there's device control and content control. And the device control again is for governing access to the USB storage. Very common use case is you may want to bring in identity to make the decision. In this case, I have a group called departing employees. I happen to have Okta integrated here. It could be Azure AD, et cetera. But I'm going to say if anybody's in the departing employees group, we're not going to give them access to the USB storage device. So that's an example use of that. Now for content control, here's where you focus on the content that's going to the USB storage device. And another ex a number of examples here, uh, one of the, the beautiful properties of Netscope Cloud DLP and Endpoint DLP specifically is that you could take all of the existing work that you've done to craft your policies or use an out of the box a compliance template and you can simply extend that to cloud DLP so you don't have to go in and recreate your regular expressions or customize your compliance templates etc you can use the same ones in this case I'm bringing a out-of-the-box compliance template called PCI data and I'm gonna look for that going to USB storage and we're not going to allow that um, we're you know this is going to address 
uh, our compliance needs here. Now, what I can also do, another example is screenshot data. So this is bringing in one of our machine learning models that can identify the presence of screenshot data, employees taking screenshots of Zoom meetings or the objects themselves. We're not gonna allow that to go to USB storage device either. So, so again, bringing in any of those DLP profiles and now the new target becomes USB uh, storage. And then finally, last but certainly not least on this, uh, this is the more sophisticated use case, but this is where you can bring in file origin. This is our new context. Because Netscope follows data everywhere it goes, we understand where that data came from. So here you can bring in that context to inform a more effective decision. And here I'm saying, if there's any data downloaded from Salesforce, we do not want that data ever to go to USB storage. I didn't even bring in a DLP profile. You can optionally bring in a DLP profile. So you could say if it's PCI data or, or whatever data. But in this case, I simply, any data downloaded from Salesforce, I never want that to go to USB storage. And then finally, the last part of that content control is just to give you a look in the fallback action. Again, if there's a network disconnection and we can't do the cloud inspection point, we have fallback actions. So you can take the action of allow or deny access to the USB storage if you're offline. Uh, even if somebody's trying to scan a, a very, very large file uh, that exceeds the, the scan limit, you could take action as well. Or even if there's a system error that, that impacts the scanning ability, uh, you have the option to do a fallback. Okay, so now that we have those policies in place, let's look at uh, what the results look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is let me open up a, a USB storage mount here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, let me uh, delete this data that's already here, is I'm gonna go ahead and take this credit card data. So I've got some PCI data. And you can see I tried to drag it directly to the USB storage. You look in the bottom right, and here you can see that we were able to block that uh, in real time. So again, extending that uh, data protection, and in this case, compliance template all the way to USB storage. Here's a screenshot. Uh, that an employee took of that image. So this is an image now of that sensitive data that was in that Excel document. And Netscope, one of our machine learning models, is screenshot data. We're able to detect that in real time, block it from going to USB storage. Now here's the other scenario. If I open up uh, an environment like Salesforce and I download some data uh, from Salesforce, uh, and now I basically have uh, this data, and it's called Juicy Data locally here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take this data that I downloaded from Salesforce, and I'm gonna upload that. Netscope detected that was data that came from Salesforce, so we're able to block it. Again, use that file origin or that risk-based input to make that policy decision. So this is a very intelligent system. And what's more, what's, this is you know the cool part about this, is everything that you've that you've seen here is basically has a very uh, small uh, footprint when it comes to both uh, you know uh, the CPU footprint uh, as well as the uh, the memory uh, the memory footprint. So um, you know there you have it. Again, most of the processing is performed in the cloud, so you don't have the overhead and you don't have to worry about this being oh my gosh, another agent, and plus you're sharing potentially this Netscope client with other services um, as well. So before we end the demo, I do want to go back into the console because I, I want to spotlight the fact that we've also integrated the alerting and the monitoring and the incident management uh, for Endpoint into our system. So if I go to scope it and alerts here, and this is where we have our unified alerts across all use cases, but you can go in and you could filter, for example, uh, by endpoint alerts. You could see all the alerts that are tied uh, specifically to the endpoint with all the metadata uh, associated with that. Um, and then we also, uh, from a, uh, a Scopit uh, standpoint, uh, we also have endpoint events, both device levels, so we can see when users are, are mounting devices, uh, the information on the device name, who the user was, the computer name, 
um, all of the uh, surrounding metadata for that particular uh, event as well. And then we have content events. Again, this is beyond just the DLP events. There's just data that's being um, you know, uh, copied over to the USB storage. That was that my data uh, document I, I did uh, just, a, just a little bit. So there you have it, uh, endpoint DLP. Uh, again, a very important part of Netscope's cloud DLP system, single pass, multi-vector architecture that sees and protects data everywhere it goes. Thank you very much.